Right, it's January 2010 and I'm just carrying on doing the digitalization of my original um, tape re handset tape recordings that I did when I went to Suffolk in 2005 and onwards um, in search of the ancestors. When we visited villages, towns, graveyards, churches, archives, all sorts of things, um, doing the family tree. So, um, on, on this is side two of a tape that has been dodgy, has been slipping and sliding, speeding up, slowing down on the other side. I don't know if it's going to do it on this side, we just have to take pot luck and see and hope for the best. But according to the start of this tape, we're going to be off to Great Wilbraham in um, Cambridgeshire, where um, we clean up a number of graves at one point, brooks especially, and sizes. So here we go. This is Sheila back in 2005 with Zara and Brandy. Right, well, Great Wilbraham, I think. Is that how you it? Wilbraham? Let's test the new batteries in a minute because um, they run out a minute ago. Are you going to play up? No, you're going again. I've had the other switch turned off. There's only buttons on it, this thing. Okay, well, we're just going to drive and park now. We've had our picnic. Off we jolly well go. Just an observation. Since we've been up here, we've noticed lots of shops and stores have been um, now run by people of the multicultural um, type. You know, it's just an interesting factor because we're right out in the middle of nowhere. In a typical English country village. Um, so, you know, our other fellow friends are, you know, enjoying the experience as well. <coughs> Brandy's really enjoying this new experience that we're having. She thinks she's going to work every day now. She's got a little mission. She's really enjoying it. She's having so much exercise and so are we. So it's quite um, demanding, actually. You've got to concentrate, you know, yeah, as I was just said, 20 people a year die in graveyards of some form. We are being careful, though. Now, we did f find an Angel End, which I know is one of our relatives. I think it's an oak. I'm not sure. It could be a mason. I've got it written at home. Angel it's a brook. It's on that road. One of them. I can't remember it was, though. Oh, going back to the Bottichon, we went, which is very sparse in graves. When we got back, we looked on the local... Paris map, and uh, there was another graveyard through that you can get to for future reference. You walk through the church path, there's a little pathway that goes to Swaff and Ballback, and on the route there is another cemetery. Anyway, we're in Great Will Abraham, I don't know how you pronounce it. Great Wilbraham. And um, there's a memorial to a John. Stevenson died October the 26th, 1847, aged 65, also of Mary, his wife, who died 1852, aged 65, and their daughter Elizabeth, who died December the 26th, 1828. It's just for reference. The graves in here are all over the place in thick grass, six foot tall. Um, I think we'll walk around. We're going to walk around the church first. Church has got one big door blocked up and another great big archway, which could have been a window. <coughs> has been totally. Well, it might have even had a, a big um, plaque on it with writing at one time. <coughs> this is Saint Nicholas of Great Will Braham in the Diocese of Eli. It's a lock church, can't get any leaflets from this one. We've got a John Miller, died 1791. From Dawson, We've got James Kidman and Sophia, his wife. She was born in 1800, died in 1880. He died in 1872, born in 1789. Kidman. By looking at the people in here, we can see they were friends, neighbours, 
of the family we've got that came to live here. Well, I know, I've got it written down at home. The lichens have taken over here, and lots of graves, unreadable. The William Jennings, who died 1835, age 72. Got a lot of Jennings. Mary Goldham, who died 1844, age 75. Harry Pilgrim, died when he was 72, in 1808. That's another section of the graveyard. As we walk here, we've got Charles Avies, A-V-E-S, who died 1887, age 62, and Rebecca, his wife, who died 1896, age 59. And another Kidman, and a Webb, and a Green, and another Dawson, and a Annie Dye, and another Dawson, and a, a Ward. Harriet Precious died 1910, age 37. Lots of little wooden crosses. Weird that, because they must realise they aren't going to last very long. John James Rundle Lee, born 1831, died 1904, age 73. Hidden in the undergrowth, on the edge of the thing, it's a one with a sort of Celtic cross. It's got memory of Mary Ann Brooks, died 1895 in her 54th year. And next to that is a Maria Brooks, who died 1896 in her 84th year. Isn't that strange? I think we've got another one. It's right in the singing little bushes. And we've got a Richard Brooks who died December the 3rd, 1890, in his 81st year. There's three Brook Braves. You can take a picture of them. Well, what I'm saying is I've got to link these up because there's a definite link with Brooks and Maria sounds a familiar name yeah. as well and the ages. There's um, a Maria Clark who died 1880, age 73. Uh, Emma Clark who died 19, well it could be 18, age 38. Just shows you by looking we have found Three brook graves, they've all got Celtic crosses. So I was having to go deep in the undergrowth. Randy's trying to find her. Randy, come this way. This way, baby. Come on, come in. We'll wait for Zara. She's coming out. She's got to take a picture. Wait, Bran. And there's a Harriet Badcock who died the 30th of December, 1895 to 49. The Reuben Badcock, who died January the 9th, 1922, age 77. Yeah, these three brook graves are very distinctive. They almost look like three faces um, from the behind. They're facing into brambles and stinging out so. And so I wouldn't be surprised they don't get pulled down eventually if they don't. Right, we've got uh, Elizabeth Oakey. Oakey, wife of... Somebody, uh, who died 1828, no, born 1828, died 1907. A few hexes that live around here, by the way. Um, John Burling, who died April the 20th, 1906, age 88. And John Burling, who died 1907, age 72. These people would have been neighbours and things like that this year. Of, um, those Brooks people. There's a circus people in this grave. He died September the 27th, 1884. This is um, a large plot to the circuses. No, no, he was born 1884, died 1960. There's some Frost and Carters here and Plum. The Douglas Kenneth Herbert Plum who died 1994, 70. Some priors here as well. I'm just getting these down when I do the census. 
she was born in, she died in 1919, age 47. There was a William. He died age 81, January 2nd, 1930. There were waves in here as well. There's a Marianne Hurst, who died 1925, born in her 88th year. Paul Precious Hurst, one who died 1916, age 85. That was Elizabeth. Thomas, who died at 86 in 1915. Elijah Precious, who died in 1938 in 73. Let's have a now. We've got Mary, wife of a Willard. Walter Willard. Mary died May the 31st, 1835.
we just want to try it. St. John's Church, Little Wilbraham. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, it's the Reverend Ryan Jones again. He's just the one up the road. It's the same address. If we need to contact. They often do more than one church. You know what I mean? <coughs> this church is in various stages of repair with white sandstone, a bit like bath stone, a bit of pebble dash. It's, uh, looks a bit untidy, but um, a few graves around. Right, which we can start? Which is Leighton, who died March 14, 1862, in his 90th year, and also um, Susan Leighton, his wife, who died in 1855, in her 80th year. John Clark, died July 26, 1807. Frederick looks like Ollie. Died 1895, age 70. Elizabeth Ashman died 1891, age 81. Claudia Miller, Miller Miller here, can't see the dates. Ella Heyman. Margaret Heyman, and the one we can't read. James Clayton. Who died 1849, age 49. Oh, what? Leighton. Oh, is it? Yeah. Leighton. Yes, Leighton's. It's Rebecca Leighton. She died 1900, age 90. Oh, there's a little sneaky pathway. It's obviously it's a public w walkway. They've got poles. They often have these little public walkways. It does look a bit sad, the church, actually. Um, needed much, much attention. Um, yeah, it was well used, but it does look a little bit... Harriet Maria Farrow, wife of Esau Farrow, who died September the 8th, 1884, age 21. Not very old she was. And John Collette, a lot of Collettes, but there's a whole row of them. Until we get up to... Uh, and more. Joseph Moore died 1878, age 85. And a Sarah Moore, probably widow of Joseph, who died at Little Something on Monday, March the 3rd, 1886, age 88. Oh, if it was, it would be an oak. There you go. Frederick, son of Joseph and Sarah Moore of Little Wilbraham, who died April the 23rd, 1869, age 39. So some of these are, I think that there are more that married out, so, yeah. you know. And the Bullion Church, we don't know really of anyone here, but the thing is, it's all because they're all close together. Oh yeah, so Peter Kent. Is it Kent? Is it Kent? Yeah, Kent here who died, um, 1830, age 65. Rose Ambrose, who died 1903, age 56. Lanny Ambrose, who died October the 15th, 1927, age 73. This is big Kent country. You've got quite a few of them here. Another, they've got their own rows until we get to Joshua. Could be Barton or who died 1895, age 59, and Frederick William, who died 1874, age 7, and Joshua, who died 1900, age 66. All of these metal rails round hasn't got a name, which is weird, got all that prediction around it. Oh, it's on the other side, it's George Kent. Big monument stone to Kent. There's lots and lots of Kents in this place. One was a private cemetery. In the broom, we got excited for a minute, we thought it was a brook. Um, husband of Harriet Broom, who died February 19th, 1885, age 43. Then we've got another broom, Mary Ann Broom. Then a George Stevens, 
died at 1895, age 76. And the Mahara Charles Plume, who died 1804, I think, quite an old stone, this one. Mahara did, and Charles died in 1884. Another Henry Plum. Elizabeth Stevens. Danby. We've got a Danby as well. And an Emmett. Charles Emmett. It's a bit unusual, isn't he? Um, wife of William Pink. An unusual name as well. Then we've got a wooden cross. Do get these sometimes. Lindsay Lennox Chaplin, priest, died 1882, no, born 1882 to August 1944, of this parish. Yeah. There's a vicar here. We've got some big ones, some big slabs, but this one's been turned over. Oh, the writing is on it. Hold on. Somebody. 
got people killed in action in the war. Um, can't see any names of any of our lot up there. So, we're going to look at some more older graves now. Hmm. Nice feeling about it, nice and warm in here. No, another older part, there's more graves and new ones. People have started to, I'm going to walk straight down this path as there are people to the left of us as well. We'll see that one on the way back. Obviously people do want to restore their churches, they're not all going to destroy everything. down here because the two little wooden crosses and a couple of great big upright. There's an Ellen Barton who died um, 1908, age 49. And it's a Pesa, somebody over there, beginning with her, Stevens. You know, she died 1904, age 58. There's a few Stevens here. William Frederick Moore died January 14, 1934, age 73. They've got an Emma Hunt. And there are quite a few other graves. You can see them popping up under the... Oh, well, um, we're looking at the church, so we're off to, um, uh, where are we going? Cordic Bulbrick? Yeah, we're going to Cordic Bulbrick. Yeah. What's it? Sofran. 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 Sofran Bulbrick we're going now. Right, we've got to um, Swaffham Bullback and there's a little very Elizabethan looking cottage with a thatch roof, 101, it's called Linton House, little windows, yeah, and we're parked outside the church now, we're going to get out, it's warm in here, and then we're hopefully going to have a drink in a nice pub called the boot at Nottingham afterwards. Okay. Now it's Swaffham Bullback Church. Yeah, we're just gonna have a look round. There's Jeremy. No, I'm not. But Henry Stevens, who died March the 30th, 1882, age 51, as we come in the church. A couple of slabs. As well. Where are we gonna start, Tara? I don't know, we're gonna go clockwise, don't we? Alright, do you wanna carry on doing clockwise then? Well, what, when do we start at the church door and come round this way then. We can just do these few here. We do these few and then work round, I think. Yeah, so we're having a look round. It's a lovely sunny day now. We're just looking at all the names. Um, looks like bingo, but I don't think it is. But this is a mixture of sandstone come pebble dash. A bit of hickledy pickledy again. Certainly need a lot of money to keep these places up. That's why you, they probably have all these fates. At the back, near the front of the church, we've got Samuel Shipp, who departed his life November the 29th, 1882, age 69, also of Hannah Shipp, his beloved wife, departed this life November the 19th, 1882, age 67. They died within days of each other. This is Shipp with the double P. They died within days of each other. We're going to talk in a minute when we've gone round. We've got Anne Powell Chambers, died 1867, age 67, and Sally Chambers who was the sister of the above, who died um, 1869, age 70. There's another Chambers next to her, could be James. So this could be a Chambers stronghold here, and in front there's a great big, large, toomey type thing. Um, chambers as well, I can see Chambers written on that. So there's a little Chambers pot here. Behind there you've got Mary. Is it Mary or Martha? 
Oh, or Mark. Oh, or somebody, um, Maria, Maria Barnes. Um, she was 51 years when she died in 1841. That's her, that's a Barnes girl. Then we've got, and uh, else have we got? Long hair. The only daughter of Thomas. Somebody right there. William Apple Yard. There's a William Apple Yard in here who died April the 3rd, 1749, aged, not quite sure, it could be 85 years, that's an old one, right by the, a little door at the side of the church. In. <laughs> Carol, that says, isn't it? Yeah. Carolyn. Yeah, I won't bother with the top bit, so this is probably the next bit along.
grass around it. Uh, July the 19th, 1837, aged 59, and his wife Sarah, who died 1878, aged 93. People did live a long age, they must have been eating well in those days. Oh, there's a dead bird here. Quite a big one. Couple of foot stones. Yeah, 
St. Mary the Virgin of Swaffham Bullback, that's the name of this church. Um, it's a little children's play area. In memory of Francis Barnes of this parish farmer who died on the 21st of December in the year of our Lord, 1774, aged 52. He bequeathed by will to the minister, church wardens and overseers of this parish of Little Swaffham for the sum of £60 to be put out by them at legal interest and to the poor inhabitants of the parish. So he left £60, which was a lot of money in those days. Um, that's about it really, there isn't any more plaques. There's a roll of incumbents. Um, just see if I can see any names coming down. Um, we're just going round. 
tonight. We're going to some graveyard tonight to put some flowers and perhaps do some tidying up. Right, we're back at Will, going to Will Abram, Will Abram Church. We're just going to put our little flowers. We're in the graves of um, the books, Richard, Maria and Marianne. And just tidy it up a bit. Right, we're cleaning up the graves. I've just cleaned up some of the moss off one, and that's the, this is Richard Brooks. It's, um, it says, Earth to Earth, Dust to Dust. Calm the words. Oh, oh no, I. in for a minute. Of course, at this stage, during our research, we didn't know. We were just about to find some oak graves because we'd missed them at the start of the week. It's holiday. Um, so this, you know, in any minute now, we actually find the oak graves. Even if we can't see the gravestones. Sometimes gravestones are used as stones entering churches, so it's worth looking at that. Look at this, though. It's too late, isn't it? 1893, but... E.W. put some with a little cross on it. All I'm missing some footstones, I came across an old jar. An old vase, probably, that's got the initials 1852 on it. It's quite old. This is a John Howlett, who died in April 1862, 
Jupiter and his wife Mary, who died May the 27th, 1887, and their daughter Sarah, who died February the 21st, 1867. This is just to remind us, just put the flowers on John Bridge and Ellen Oaks' grave. We've got the details. Inside the church are two large statues, a man and a woman. One's called Elizabeth de Burr, B-U-R-G-H, died 1412. And John, somebody, died 13 something to, four, no, born 13 something to 1420. John, somebody, with a two big figures. Lying out. Church looks like it really needs some stonework done on it. Of course, also at this stage we were unaware of our medieval ancestors, which would be barons, lords, kings, um, baronesses, all sorts of things. Later on, we discover, but at this stage we didn't realise. Yes, she is. 
Marianne, the wife of Luke. <laughs> wife of Robert Lacey, died 1895, age 68. And Robert, there's a pleasure in here. Henry and Martha Anne Pledger, the sons of Charles Pledger, died in France in 1918, age 33, and also Frank, who died in 1882, age 8 months. We have now also found Stephen Oak, spelled with an E, and Mary, his wife. We're just cleaning up the stone now. That will be Edward's father and mother. Right, underneath the oak tree by the church, we have found our ancestors. It's like our mission has been successful. Like they've kept us waiting to the last minute because we missed these graves when we first came here a week ago. It's as if they were saying, go on, we want you to look around the county. Go and look round and then, you know, you'll be coming back here. And that's just what we've done. We've gone and up roads, down roads, up little villages, in and out, backwards and fronts getting lost, but finding ourselves. And on our final day here, we have located. It's made sense of all this trip. We've been busy cleaning up grave areas of the brooks. And then we've come here and we found Stephen Oak and there's others in the grave. I dug as much as I could out to get down to see what I could read. And, and Stephen's in there with Mary Brown. Edward's in front of him, and his, and I think it's his granddaughter's by the side of him. It's really quite an emotional time, so this our final day. We're just going off to see Mark Oak now and put some flowers on his grave at Dunningham. <laughs>